time to go abroad and spend this hour with you, Yoshi Shimatsu, who has been heroically uh, pushing into areas that few dare to go anymore. Now, there is a noticeable quiet in Japan since the so-called secrecy law was passed by the Abe regime, secrecy to protect the nuclear power industry, of course. It has already dampened much of the news that used to be coming out of many sources in Japan uh, with a predictable result. People are afraid. Uh, they don't want to go to prison for 5 or 10, 15 years, which the law suggests that they very well may end up doing. There are good developments over here in terms of information, however. We are doing our best, of course, around the clock for you and have been since 3.11 of 11. Yochi has been with us most all of that time. He has contributed more than any single human being on the planet to the big picture of understanding what's happening at Fukushima Daiichi and how it is impacting the planet. And that's the way we expect to continue right on for as long as there are people listening. We're not going to change. One good news in the media, the mainstream media now, uh, we like to think we have had something to do with holding their feet to the fire. The LA Times is now picking up the story finally, which we reported uh, months ago, that the sardine industry, the sardine populations along the West Coast and in the Gulf of Alaska, well, there aren't any. Boats are coming back without a single sardine in their nets. Zero. And again, sardines are a primary food fish for larger fish and birds in the ocean. The masses, the uncountable numbers of sardines feed enormous numbers of mammals and seabirds and fish, and they are now starving. Boats coming back, no fish, nobody has an answer. Of course, now the Times is beginning to suggest that maybe we ought to take a look at Fukushima. Well, maybe, folks, at the LA Times, it's too late, which it is, and the bottom of the Pacific Ocean is littered with dead sardines. They're dying because it's all bioaccumulative. The sardines eat little fish. They probably eat the algae as well and the plankton, which pick this stuff up immediately. Ten or twelve meals of algae and plankton, and you've got that radionuclide multiplied in your body if you're a sardine by ten or twelve fold and you're dead. And that's what probably has happened. They all ate, they all consumed, and they all got sick relatively in the same window, and most of them died. Uh, we'd like to think that maybe they fled south and went to the southern hemisphere, but I don't believe that that's happened. Yochi, welcome back. Where are you tonight? Well, thank you. I'm in Bangkok, Thailand, uh, stopping over uh, from my time in Hong Kong and trying to get back to my coffee farm for the rest of the dry season. Ah. And uh, met some. Jap yeah, I've been meeting with Japanese friends here, and uh, and uh, you know, the, uh, many. Uh, There's no coincidence that many Japanese are here. Uh, anyone who could speak English seems to have left Japan. You know, and uh, hundreds of thousands. I'm of I'm told uh, several hundred thousand Japanese yeah, have I, left. I see everywhere, everywhere in Bangkok. You see these teams of uh, five. To ten guys and girls, you know, usually youngish, with one sort of uh, boss with them, uh -huh. and they're setting up uh, guest houses, new hotels, uh, uh -huh. rent, you know, a real estate company. So they're bringing uh, in investment capital. Well, no, well, basically it's a capital flight. There's there, you know, there's this capital flight from Japan. They're That's what I'm saying. They're to, they're they're oh, bringing yeah, in yeah, investment yeah. capital. Yes. Yeah, yeah, to invest in Thailand because it's Correct. not only because they expect the Japanese economy to tank, but everyone right. knows the country is radioactive. So I had some dinner with some friends last night, and uh, they do know now. You know, they, they, their assumption, their, their assumption is most of Japan is contaminated, and they're surprised that when I say that maybe there might be some pockets that are less contaminated than others. You know, they just assume it's just generally all over Japan. And people have got to leave, and they're trying to figure out strategies yeah. of how to get out. Now, let, let me, shocking things they told me go ahead. over dinner, this is really terrible, that there's zero news about Fukushima in Japan now. That all the news about anything to do with Fukushima, they're getting only from foreign news sources, nothing from Japanese news sources. Like this one. Uh, since, the passage, since the passage, yeah, since the passage of the security bill, that in fact news about Fukushima has dried up, and I so, I, 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 test, <laughs> I tested their their thesis, and I looked up the TEPCO site, and sure enough, TEPCO hasn't been putting out many press releases. They said nothing about the uh, you know the large earthquake that struck near there just recently. Oh, wow, yeah. five point you know, four hours when they mm -hmm. were when they're supposed to be moving fuel rods, and 
Reactor 4, not, not a peep of news about. That's some old news about, you know, water contamination. And also the, their only news item, I think the last news post was December 27th, and that was about uh, they're asking the Japanese government for uh, something like $100 billion in bailout money. So that's that's all they're, you know, posting is, uh, uh, you know, the need for more money to continue their work. That's all. You know, there's no news about what's going on in the plant, about uh, radiation releases, about the situation at uh, the spent fuel pool, the reactor board, nothing of the sort. It's just dead quiet. So that's why these friends that, you know, it's been just really mysteriously quiet in Japan and having to look for Fukushima news and, you know, overseas websites and, and newspapers is quite, you know, um, quite alarming for them, you know, that the, the level of secrecy is, is, is so great, you know, yeah, one would expect so the, 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 the law, the, the law came down like a sledgehammer. Uh huh. Yeah, and and basically the media has not got much room to work. Even uh, Tokyo Electric, because they have to ask the government for a bailout, they're uh-huh. not going to release any information, anything, yeah, of course not. Uh, anything about the true situation on the ground. So it's worse than ever right now. I mean, it was bad after three eleven when they tried to bamboozle us with mm-hmm. all this uh, disinformation and false reports. But like I said, in the past, at least we could have something. We had something to work with. We could. Uh, test whether a report was, you know, patently absurd or not. Right now, without any news reportage, any news releases, there's nothing to test, basically. There's nothing to challenge. So that's the situation now. Now, what you were saying about the sardines, yeah, I mean, we've been, we've been uh, monitoring the situation. I, 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 as you know, I've been taking uh, radiation readings oh, yeah. on both sides of the Pacific. Mm-hmm. Long ago predicted a massive kill-off. The kill-off has obviously occurred. I've even reported on the push of sardines when uh, last June, July, when I was on the West Coast, down south, if you recall, San Onofre. Yeah. I talked to a, a fish and wildlife officer who talked about uh, there was going to be a huge... They, they, well, well, first of all, I talked to local bait shops there who said, yeah, everything's okay with sardines so far. And then the fellows from down south, uh, uh, you know, San Diego area were telling me there's going to be a big push of uh, warm water coming up, as usual, in the summer. And uh, sardines will be plentiful, no problem right now. But since then, there's been this enormous, this this incident of all the sardines congregating in uh, Monterey Bay, and I see many other bays along the coast, uh, to escape whatever is out there in the Pacific. They're followed by all the sorts of animals, sea anim- uh, uh, fish and sea mammals that feed on sardines, so I had to follow them in. So uh, now, now we're hearing about a wipeout at sea. That there's nothing there. Well, and, and it, uh, again, if the if the sardines are gone and they are gone, you got boats in Alaska, both off California as well, coming back with no catch. There are no sardines. That means the entire food chain, the entire chain of sea life, has been crippled, if not terminally destroyed by this. We don't well, know I, yet. Well, absolutely, Sorry. Sardines are a fundamental uh, part of the, the base, the foundation for the entire. Food you you chain cut out of, that uh, leg, and the whole building will come down. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're probably indicative. Whatever is affecting the sardines is affected, you know, invertebrate like squid, herring, other. How can uh, it not? Type fish. And those every sardine yeah. they eat, Yochi, has already bioaccumulated <laughs> radionuclides many times over. Absolutely, absolutely, and. Um, and we're seeing very rapid rates of bioaccumulation, at least in the starfish, uh, from seaweed. So we would expect the same right. from sardines. Yeah. Animals do not, do they do not, let's say, bone the fish and all that and take the fillets. They eat the whole, you know, internal organs, uh, the gut, yeah. everything, you know, the, the bones, everything else. So they're taking in massive. If, if the sardines do it contain, uh, cesium and strontium, cesium in the muscle, strontium in the bones, the larger fish and sea mammals, are taking well, just massive amounts. You know, they, they have to deadly them doses. They have high metabolic rates. Of course. Yeah, they have high metabolic rates. Yeah. have to take in fantastic amounts of fish to keep going. So basically, <laughs> radiation yeah. is the obvious cause. I mean, you know, they, you, you can't blame something like an El Nino, which is not there. You the El Nino blame. is not there. It's not there. You can't yeah. blame it. If the El Nino was there, we'd be seeing the what we call the Pineapple Express the uh, subtropical yeah. moisture train up from the islands and they're about we're not seeing that we're seeing yeah. a normal and procession now, you know, of we, pacific storms which yeah. are being blocked yeah. i've been sending you pictures 
and I'll put them up. Satellites don't lie. Yeah. These storms run into a well, wall. Is, We're going to go through the break. Ma- this is, yeah. This okay. This is a major story developing, and I think we got it, it has to do with major changes in weather patterns and attempts to prevent uh, artificially prevent you know, these weather patterns from bringing in the worst from Fukushima. The United States federal government has done nothing to inform or alert the public to a potential. They can under they can underplay it as much as they want. They're not saying anything. And we know, you know and I know, that they're testing the water, they're testing the air, they're testing the rain, the soil, they're testing the animals, the fish, they're testing everything. They're not stupid. They know exactly what's going on, and they're not going to tell us under any circumstances unless it serves their purposes, which I can't imagine it doing at this point. NOAA is supposed to uh, watch over the uh, environment. You know, weather right. in the broadest sense of the term, meteorology and broadest uh, protect us, but it's dead silent on the strange activities, not just happening now, as you have pointed out, and for the past more than a month, inside the mid-Pacific area, but also now in the Atlantic. Very similar uh, wall, uh, sort of a uh, wall, uh, invisible wall being built there, and which has caused the um, polar vortex. You know, there's two walls: one, a standing wave in the Pacific, and another giant standing wave, electromagnetic w- magnetic wave in the Atlantic. And as a result, the Arctic, uh, the jet stream in the Arctic, uh, low pressure right now. Has got nowhere to go. These are two high pressure zones in between the low pressure zone building up, and it's being it's going downward. It's going into the American states in the Midwest, yeah. Yeah. and that's what's accounting for the record uh, freezing cold temperatures now across the middle of the United States and in the East Coast. It's sort of very, you know, severe winds, uh, severe winds, wind chill factors, and severely uh, cold temperatures. I will be putting up uh, a series of satellite, Northern Pacific satellite pictures after the program tonight with a nightly news batch. You'll see it tonight and tomorrow. And you just look at the pictures. They speak for themselves. Watch what happens. A high-pressure system is a round, circulating, clockwise, high-pressure ridge, a blocking ridge of air. Now, how how can you see right-angled turns on a circular air mass. You can't. Now, I've got a number of satellite pictures which show perfect 90-degree turns at this at the boundaries of this high-pressure system, which argues for artificiality immediately. And there's, no, there's another one with a 45-degree turn. You'll see the pictures. I've had red lines added. So you make up your own minds. Is this an accident of nature that all of a sudden, November and December and into January, no storm systems have gotten through? I don't think so. You take a look and make up your own mind. Now, uh, the other story well, is... Uh, go ahead, Yochi. Yeah, I think the science behind these, what you call 90-degree turns, uh, does make sense because, you know, the uh, uh, particles of moisture there are ionized. They're ionized uh, from the, in, the, in the jet stream and in the Arctic. We've got to remember that uh, in, the, in the years after Fukushima, the first and second year after Fukushima, the ozone layer over the Arctic was completely burned off to where it was microscopic before, really, in terms of, uh, you know, planetary turns. But then it became larger than the Antarctic ozone hole. And as a result, not only Fukushima radiation, but cosmic rays. We've seen these huge aurora borealis, northern light. Remember that we discussed, uh, you know, just unprecedented uh, going southward because there's no ozone in the upper atmosphere. So what's happening, the atmosphere over the Arctic region, the, the uh, uh, Arctic Circle, is massively ionized, and you've got uh, Fukushima, you know, uh, Radioactive particles, splitting apart water molecules, but also the, all the other radiation from the the, the uh, cosmic radiation, the solar radiation coming down 